Hello everyone, I'm Diego Silva and today video let's talk about cameras. The first thing I want to say is none of these brands are paying me for to do this. I'm talking about these cameras for my experience, what I did and why I have it. First thing you have to know about a camera is what is the purpose? What do you want to use that camera for? So the first thing is you are doing weddings. If you are doing weddings, you need something that uh, can allow you to do pictures while you are able to be doing video also. If you are doing weddings, the best option will be like a DSLR. I use the ADD because it was the one that I can afford when I was doing the, the videos. I was covering NASCAR and in NASCAR, I was having to be fast with a zoom lens when somebody was crashing and getting right there the moment so when you are in that time you have you are far away you have to be with a zoom the stabilizer of this camera out of focus is really good this was my option at that time when i'm doing short films uh, this was my first camera to do film i did short films i did a uh, feature film in spain the difference with between this one and this one this doesn't have a stabilizer doesn't have autofocus so that's why i was using this one on on nascar with this one you uh have 2.3k this was my first camera it was like in 2012 i think it was the first camera i was using for film good thing about this one you can edit very simple this footage is 2.3k almost all computer can work can deal with it has a good quality is 13 stop after a while i get the red when i get the red was for better quality uh when we were doing things for uh, commercials or advertisement the other camera i have sometimes as a big camera in film is the one that we are using there is the black magic 4k cinema uh, pocket you need something small or you need an, something that you cannot shoot twice somebody's falling somebody's flying you have another option that is pretty cheap uh, the second thing I want to talk is when you are one man show I'm rather have something that you can move faster you can do the the focus you can be controlling everything by yourself cameras like the red is most of the time when you have a crew where it's helping you to pull focus more when you have cinema lenses that everything is manual everything is it's a completely different workflow that's why you have to know if you are a one-man show or you have a crew to work with what is my budget I want to be a filmmaker that I want to do short films or I want to do future films but I don't have $30,000 for a camera okay the Blackmagic the 6k pocket camera that's a really good quality 6k and it's around $2,000 so it's affordable for most of the people should I buy or should I rent that depends on your work if you are shooting every day you should buy if you are shooting once in a while, you should rent. But at the end, when you are renting and renting and renting and renting, at the end you are paying the camera. So sometimes it's just better to put together some money and get your own camera. Am I good pulling focus? That's interesting because if you are not good pull pulling focus, you probably want a camera that has out of focus. You don't have to have that in your mind. If you have this camera with a, a lens uh, 85, let's say, and it's a string close up, and you are putting it in 1.8, and the actor is moving back and forth, you will be nuts. You will be getting crazy because you will be losing the, the focus. So sometimes, if you are not good pulling focus, just get a camera with, with an out of focus. It's just what is your comfort? What is better for you? Will I use the camera where I have control of the light? Let's say that you are a YouTuber and you know that you always will be shooting in a, on a set. 
you will not be outside shooting or something like that. If you are controlling the light, you can have a camera that is less expensive, that doesn't need that quantity of a step. Probably this can be good if you are doing something like that, a DSLR. You can control, then do a color grading, and that's it. The Canon have a tendency to have a little bit of red in the video, so you can control that on the color grading and take all of that out of the picture and have a good quality. If you will be outside where you have highlights and very dark places and it's at the same time, you will need to have something more expensive. This is 16.5 stops. If you need to do color correction on live, you can do it through DaVinci, but it will be so hard. Uh, but if you have a camera like this, it's Blackmagic Studio camera. This camera has two ports that you can control the color grading, you can do color correction on live, you can do, you can also control the, the focus and the zoom. So it's a lot of things that to have in mind. I use that for Kelly Talk Show. Uh, when we were creating the show, we were thinking, okay, we need at least three cameras. What is the way that we want to do these interviews? Will be live? Okay, let's do it live. We will use a switcher. I will do the color grading. We have a final product when the guest is just living. So you don't have to spend time editing. You are doing the editing on live. Do I need to shoot in 1080p, 4K or 8K? First thing you have to think about, do you really need it? I mean, the customer is asking you for 4K. Some people is saying, I want to do it 4K because it looks better. Okay, let's go 4K. But do you have a good computer to edit it? Let's go 8K. But do you have a good computer to edit it? Will you be doing YouTube videos? Do you have enough storage to be having 4K or 8K footage? That's something that you have to think. I have around a thousand videos with this one and it's around 12 terabytes. And I have a few with this one and it's a hundred terabytes. So that's the difference, 8K or 1080p. Sometimes it's good to have something like this. This is a gimbal, it's the Osmo. I use this one when it's things like, I was using it in NASCAR and NFL where I have to be running next to the person and be getting something interesting. Also, this has a, a digital zoom. So if you want to do a trombone shot, you can do it and you can get very good results. I will leave the video right here. If you have more questions about cameras, just leave it in the, com in the comments below. I will try to answer all your questions. This is Kelly Talk Show and I'm Diego Silva. See you next time. Don't forget to subscribe.